Yes, all right, the lads. Welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. We are back again uh, with another one. We've got ourselves uh, a Mikel Arteta press conference. Um, of course, ahead of the West Brom game. And and, and this could be one that um, uh, that covers the Manchester City game as well. I'm not really uh, 100% sure, but at times when he does press conferences midweek, he doesn't do them uh, for the weekend game. But because it's a big one, um, I do expect another press conference after the game and another one before the Manchester City game. But if, if we don't get the Manchester City press conference, uh, then don't worry. We shall have the, uh, uh, the, um, at the match reaction press conference so uh he spoke about a couple of things especially um you know the two losses that we suffered um in the first two games and he said that that, that was very uncertain uh we put out uh we, we put out a very young side um and things like that so we're gonna be listening in from Mikel. do smash a like on the video do subscribe to the channel and let's get our party right about now started Mikel, Mikel with, with two, two games, games into, into the season, season find ourselves, ourselves in a difficult, difficult moment, moment. But how, how important, important is it for us to maintain, to maintain our focus and belief on all the work that we've been putting in? Yeah, great question. Well, well you have, have to realise first that, uh, that the position that we're in, in um, is not what we want, want to be and we should not accept it. it and we should not use too many excuses to justify where we are. Yeah. And, and just um, try, try to use the moment and the challenge ahead of us as an opportunity. And, um, and and take it and, and encourage everybody around you to have the same mentality, the same energy, and same good turn around. We've done a lot of work. Um, we are under difficult circumstances. Yeah, you know, first question asked, um, you know, he was asked how do we um, turn things around and, 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 and he said, you know, we shouldn't be using an excuse. Uh, we shouldn't be using too many excuses for the, for, for, for the position in which we are um, this season. And he said, we should be turning things around. And I, I think um, he is absolutely spot on, absolutely right. Um, despite the fact that we want cry, to you know, criticize him, Every, everybody's criticizing him, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, but he's absolutely right. We don't, we don't need to, uh, you know, fall onto the back of the losses so much. We've got to move on. The excuses are not needed. All we need to do now is work hard and move on brilliant answer i think brilliant question I, 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 as well um let's try to move forward as well circumstances at the moment but, but uh, we, we need everybody, everybody together, together and the spirit to be fair around here the togetherness that we have, have around the team, team. And, and even with the bone and ownership it's, it's um it's really strong, strong. But, but we need, need to give, give um our fans and, and probably the outside world uh, some encouragement and that's only given with results, with results. so we, we need, need to get results, results. Yeah, so right. you've obviously put, put a lot of graft over the summer, summer and I'm sure, sure you've, you've seen, seen a lot of progress with, with, with how your side, side is playing tactically over the summer, summer as well. As well. So, so when, when you find, find yourself in a situation like this, this what, what are the key messages to your squad to kind of maintain that, that, that confidence going, going forward? forward? Well, well that's, that's a big word confidence in, in, in what we're doing and what they are capable of doing it and try to find the reasons why you don't win football matches. They know our preparation has been disturbed. We had to do something in the brain for game and we had to alter it 24 hours later before so the game. It happened exactly the same thing against um, against Chelsea. But we have to adapt. But I want to see a team that never gives up. Um, we didn't do it in either of those two games. I think there were different feelings after the games. But against Chelsea, you saw a team in the second half as well that, that keep believing. But to be fair, they were better than us. And that's football. Cool. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Just yeah, absolutely. Just want to add, uh, add something on that. I think, um, despite the fact that, you know, despite the fact that we criticized Mikel for, for for not winning that Chelsea game, Chelsea were absolutely superior. Chelsea were absolutely better than us in terms of quality, um, and I think also in game management because when they when they got their second goal, they absolutely they were absolutely spot on because when you get your second goal, you can lose it, but they didn't do that. Uh, they absolutely became very aware of the situation. Uh, their game, you know, their game, man game management was actually top notch, top class. Um, I loved it, and I, I think Mikel is right because at, at times. You know, an opponent is better than you, and 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 that's it, and that's football. Um, at times you're good, at times you're not good enough, um, and your opponent is, is is way too bigger than you. And I think with the addition of 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 Romel Lukaku, Chelsea were absolutely so powerful uh, than Arsenal. Is there something that's gonna happen over the weekend? Manchester City, they're gonna be so big, they're gonna be so big. But I don't want to, I don't want us to speak about City. Uh, let's just focus on 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 on, on Arsenal, West Brom, and the press conference.
and you, you touched, touched on it there, there. We, we have faced, faced some adversity this season injuries and COVID protocols and while I know you won't use that as an excuse for the result as such how does that impact your plans and preparations finding out news like that say 20 well, we had we had different ideas of what we wanted to do in in the games and the players probably that we we're going to be utilizing but credit to the boys for how they tried we put yeah. out there the youngest team in the premier league <sighs> come on me cow come on and um, and you can see that in, in certain moments and some of them are getting the first experience and um, and we have some big big players out of the picture right now but uh, the picture in football can change really quickly and that's the the positive thing and what i'm really hopeful with and when you look back on our performance well, i don't buy into the idea that we lost those games because of the young kids. I think we lost the Brentford game uh, because, of, of course, the COVID-19 news came in a little bit, uh, you know, late. So, you know, it disorganized the preparations and things like that. The Chelsea game, I, I think any excuse can work for Chelsea. Um, they, were big, you know, they were better than us. That could just work. We don't need many excuses. But when, when Mikel says that we, we actually put out um, the youngest team, you know, ever... Well, I don't know how true that is, but I think many of our senior members were in that team, were in those teams uh, when we lost to Brentford and Manchester City. So it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be an excuse. I think we should start winning, you know, Premier League games, um, starting from the next one if possible. But anyway, uh, big up to Mikel, uh, br brilliant answer. I do love it. This is so, so far, how, how do you reflect, reflect on them? What are the, the key areas, areas you think need adjusting or, or have been missing? missing? Well, I think there were two different performances against Brentford. Um, in the first 15, 20 minutes, we didn't have anything. And, uh, we conceded from a second phase. Uh, in a corner, you get the momentum. Then we struggle to progress and, and find uh, real moments of threat in the half. In the second half, we were much better. We had total control of the game. I think we had 23 shots. Um, but again, not enough of real threat in the box. Um, to find the, the way to score a goal and not enough shots on target to be fair and then we considered another set piece that was debatable whether it was a foul or not the game is gone against Chelsea I think we started the game really well first yeah, time yeah, that I agree. we had I agree with that. Know, I agree with that. they used to score the goal and then we went through 25-30 difficult moments uh, before just half time where we had five minutes where it was the penalty on Bukayo we had four or five corners and I'm better than interested in the final set in, in the, the second, second half, half we, we try to give it a go, and you know when that happens as well, there are going to be moments that you're going to be open. They are, might be in the best team at the moment in, in Europe doing that. And, um, and we, we did the match again to score. We need clean sheets and we need to score goals. Without that, we won't be winning enough football matches, and, and that's for me the main area, the two boxes. Exactly. You know, it says you need to win football matches, you need clean sheets, and you need goals at the moment we don't have clean sheets we don't have goals so we literally can't win a football match okay? and, and that is the frightening part i've seen i, I do watch the kickoff so uh, you know so much I, I, I think i watch um 95 of their content especially when it comes to uh, premier league and one thing they actually speak about is the fact that we don't score we don't clip you know keep clean sheets that means we we absolutely can't win a football game, and Mikel just you know just says it in this one. Uh, brilliant, I think it's brilliant. I think we've got to work on it to win a game. You either don't consider and score one goal, uh, at least one goal. But if you do not score, then your opponent is under no pressure that will actually take the three points. So. Uh, I think Mikel knows the problem, and, and, and this is one of the things uh, that if you know, if, if if one day Mikel gets himself sacked, um, I don't think anyone will, argue, will will be like, maybe he needed a little time, maybe he, you know, you know, because I think he knows the problem. He's got to work on it. I don't know whether he has uh, he has the tools to work on it or the ability to work on it. Uh, that is a little bit debatable and questionable, but he knows the problem. When he speak when he speaks, um, you know, to the journalist in every press conference, he speaks about it. Every time he speaks about the problem. So, Mikhail, you know the problem. Get the answer right. But brilliant answers, though. Brilliant answer. I think the press conference is a little bit more open um, than the rest because the, the rest are, are, are full of, you know, lies, really. And since our last interview, Mikhail, Mikhael, we've, we've made two additions, additions to our first team squad. One, one of which is a familiar face, face Martin Odegaard. How, how pleased were you to be able to get, get I guess, your, your, your top, top target in the club? 
really happy because uh, I saw my stage with Sir that he, he wouldn't be possible, but he wasn't very keen on, on selling the player. Martin always expressed his desire to come, but uh, it wasn't looking very possible. And then the, the door opened, and straight away the club was really supportive. They uh, did I think, a great job um, to manage the situation, and now we got the player that we wanted, and we know because we have experience with him already for, for six months. Absolutely, and I guess Martin was a big part of, of our turnaround in form last season. And I guess a, a key thing with Martin's play is not just the quality he brings in himself, but the, the way he allows others to play as well and unlock their, their best ability. Yes, I think he makes uh, the rest of the players around him better. Um, his work ethic is phenomenal, the way he... He goes about his job, his professionalism, his character, he's a really likeable person. Uh, I think he, he has fitted really well in the culture. And then for the way we want to play, he's a player with, uh, with exceptional qualities um, to add to the team. And how has Aaron taken to his first week in training as well? With Aaron, I spoke a few, a few times with him, obviously, before he signed. I was really impressed um, with his personality, his character. We need, to, we need two goalkeepers, two top goalkeepers in this club. It's always been the case when I was here. We always had two good, um, really goalkeepers with different qualities, different age profiles, and, uh, and they need to compete. And that's what we want in every situation, every role we want people to compete. And the goalkeeping position is not, um, is not different. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and just to add on that from Mikael, I think... And anyone who thinks Aaron Ramsdale is a bad goalkeeper, please, uh, you know... Keep your emotions at bay, please do. Um, I think Aaron Ramsdale is a decent goalkeeper. We'll, we'll get to see that um, as time goes on. And I think it's going to provide that that needed um, competition to ban Leno. It might not be the kind of competition that uh, a player like Andre Onana would put because Onana is 25 and uh, Leno looks at Onana as 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 as, as, as an immediate solution uh, to him. But I think Ramsdale is also going to put you know, keep pushing Leno um, until he pushes him out of the first you know f f first position, uh, which I think will happen personally. I, I don't know where where I got this kind of love from uh, for 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 Aaron Ramsdale though but i just feel it and Mikael says um it's gonna you know, it's gonna provide the competition that's what we want two uh two two uh two, two players per position you look at notavirus and kian tiani i think kian tiani is gonna be um you know under a little pressure to return uh from his injury because nuno is, is actually coming you know, is, is actually uh you know developing thick and fast and and, and you know you, you're always afraid uh when you have a player like um you know as, as young and good as nuno Tavares, you know you know um you know at at your heels he's always you know he's always gonna be uh a threat so i think aaron rams though San for us no good signing a lot of money though yeah i think we, we could have done a little bit you know better in, term, in terms of finances but uh we roll we've got the goalkeeper that's what we wanted uh let's see what Mikhail says uh you know as, as we close this in terms of fitness and, and getting, getting up to speed uh, maybe involved, involved tomorrow against west brom we will see um they've all been training a few days uh, only a few days we just got the visa from martin yesterday i think Aaron has uh, has been a while see, without training but uh, yeah, they all want to play so let's see I suppose the Carabao Cup at the moment a good chance for us to build intensity, get some match minutes in the go, and hopefully yeah, that, that first win of the season. Yeah, yeah let's see who's available again. Uh, we have some knocks and stuff from the game. Um, players that need minutes and want minutes, and that's a competition, obviously, that, uh, that we want to fight for, and, um, and we need a win as well. And just finally, Mikael, what's your message to the fans ahead of these games against West Brom and Manchester City this week? First of all, say thank you because the atmosphere that we saw before the game, when the when the team getting was getting the introduction of every member, it was um, it was so special. I had costumes and, and I was feeling like you know before. Then I think they tried to support the team very much. I know they are disappointed when you lose at home. There has to be some reaction, but um, this is a project that is going to take some time. Right, that's it. That is where I wanted to close it, and and and, and it says it. Um, and I'll close it at that. This is a project that's going to take some time. Whether Mikel is sucked or backed or, Mikel or, 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 or Conte comes in, Ateta says this is a project that's going to take some time. So maybe we've got to be as patient 
as we have never before my name is Kosi. do smash a like on the video do subscribe to the channel and i'll speak to you in the next one because Tita speaking to the media uh and obviously his responses are very you know uh, are, are quite very clear arsenal do want to win football games we have a project it's moving on but it's gonna take some time